Funding for the production of Folks is provided in part by the Friends of LPB. Today, a visit to Senegal, West Africa through ardent song. First, we'll look at some extraordinary rare paintings on glass from Senegal. And then we'll share with you the remarkable music of Senegalese musicians Arfan Kuyate and his wife Penda Diabete. In addition, we'll explore the connection between the black populations of Senegal and the United States today on Folks. Everybody says folks. Hello everyone and welcome to Folks. I'm Rob Hinton. Today we'll be visiting Senegal, West Africa by way of the University Art Museum in Lafayette, Louisiana as we share with you some rare glass paintings from Senegal and explore the connection between the black populations of that country and the United States. Senegal is the westernmost country in Africa. It was formerly a territory in French West Africa, but in 1960 it became the independent republic of Senegal. The capital of Senegal is Dakar. Maurice Dedou, linguistics attaché for the French embassy, lived in Senegal for five years, and he shared with us his impressions of the country. I remember strongly so many impressions, you know, at the same time when you discover the people in the streets in Dakar, because the first feeling is the street, you know. In the street or in the markets, you see all the kind of public places. You, you know, you are... It's an encounter with so many colors, volumes, so different from Europe. You know, it was my first contact with Africa, and I enjoy it a lot. And the people of Senegal is so friendly. The fr you know, we were talking about impression, visual impressions, maybe uh, sounds impression, but the f how friendly is the people? That another very a thing that I cannot forget. You know, was the uh, adjustment there difficult? Oh, not at all. Not at all. You know. I work with the French State Department and, you know, I enjoy my work a lot. I was teaching a lot in, in Senegal and uh, teaching French, of course, and, uh, you know, I, I want to, I, I enjoy a lot to live abroad and to meet different people. I've been learning the language of Senegal so that the reason for what maybe I had a very nice uh, stay in, in Senegal is because I, you know, at the beginning I tried to learn the language. I'm not fluent at all, but it's just to show the people that you want to share their culture and their language, and so they are very sensitive to that, and they like that very much, you know. Carl Brasso, assistant director of the Center for Louisiana Studies at the University of Southwestern Louisiana, has done a lot of research on the relationship between the black populations of Senegal and South Louisiana. Well, when slavery finally gets established in Louisiana, about seven, beginning about 1719, uh, Louisiana was a proprietary colony owned by uh, what was then called the, uh, the Company of the West and it later uh, evolved into the Company of the Indies. Um, this company had as a subsidiary company the, uh, the Company of Senegal, which was uh, slave, involved in the slave trade in West Africa. I had uh, for a time a monopoly in all slave trade on the Guinea coast, which is all of the, the curve uh, in uh, West Africa. Uh, the, uh, sl the company traders were not as aggressive as private uh, entrepreneurs who were involved, uh, by, who obtained licenses from the company uh, to engage in the slave trade. And uh, as a consequence, they were generally pushed out of the more lucrative uh, slave markets, which were then in the Angola, Congo, and uh, uh, Ivory Coast, Guinea areas. Uh, so as a result, there was only one place 
where they could fall back on, where the company had a monopoly, where they had a, a sure supply of slaves, and that was Senegal. So most of the slaves who came to Louisiana in this uh, proprietary period, which is when most of the slaves came to Louisiana in the early 18th century, came directly from Senegal. While in Senegal, Maurice Dedou collected more than 150 rare glass paintings, paintings illustrating scenes from the Koran, West African folk legends, and everyday life in Senegal. How did you discover this unique art of glass painting? Uh, you know, I w all my life I've been interested in arts and plastic arts, as, uh, you know, fine arts in general. And uh, uh, when I arrived in Senegal, I just saw uh, people um, working on sculpture or mask, and it was not uh, authentic art. It was just copy of arts, pieces of art coming from other parts of Africa who are in the forest. Dakar and the s surrounding areas is the savanna, is just grass, it's not forest. They don't have trees to cut the trees and to make sculpture. So it was a bit, you know, disappointing to find just copies. And one day I went to a, a friend's uh, for dinner or something like that, and on the, the walls of their living room, I discovered this wonderful, just it was 10 pieces, and I said, what's that? Where does that come from? And they begin to explain to me a bit. They didn't know that much. They just enjoyed these colors and all that. And I begin to be interested. When I came back to France, I went to the libraries and to try to find out about this art, why to paint on glass and not in wood or uh, whatever. And I begin to, to go to the Medinas, the, 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 you know, the, the African parts of the towns where the people where they are putting that in, in the walls and collecting that and and I begin to ask the people that I was interested in and I, I wanted to, if they wanted, I, I could buy that and I begin to have the virus of the collector, you know. The paintings are presently on display at the University Art Museum on the University of Southwestern Louisiana campus. Herman Muir, director of the museum, took us through the exhibition. In this first gallery, we're looking at, in fact, scenes that were inspired by religious themes, some by the Christian Bible. <clears throat> Senegal is 5% Christian and 85% Muslim. These scenes, for instance, are depicting a very traditional biblical story of Noah and his ark. Uh, we also have this scene, which is a kind of vision of paradise with all the animals living in harmony. As we uh, move through the gallery, we'll see some of the... Uh, the paintings that are directly related to uh, Islam. Here, of course, is a quite beautiful painting of a mosque. It's uh, somewhat uncharacteristic of the majority of the Senegalese paintings in that you have a sense of deep space here. It's conceivable that the source for this image was, in fact, a, a photograph, perhaps a, a color postcard. Uh, the more characteristic paintings that we find uh, in Senegal are rather naive, not unlike a lot of American folk art, which uses very, very flat color and very shallow space. Well, I would say that here, for instance, this is an interesting painting uh, which, uh, of, of a structure which is called a marabou, and it is, in fact, a mausoleum where one of the prophets uh, or religious leaders would be buried. And in this painting here of the, the camel, it's very interesting because in Islam, uh, depicting Allah, the god Allah, is forbidden. And in this painting of the camel with this kind of closed basket up on top, in Arabic is written the name of Allah, the indication being that the spirit of Allah, you know, exists, you know, in that, uh, in that basket on the back of the camel. This is a very interesting section of the exhibition because we have a number of paintings illustrating events in the life of a very important Islamic leader. He, in fact, is the founder of the largest sect of Islam in Senegal. He was born in 1900, and his name is Sheikh Amadou Bamba, and he's the founder of the Murid sect, which is a very conservative, very fundamentalist sect of Islam. Uh, and he is always depicted this way, in, dressed in his white robe. This is a picture of Amadou Bamba in front of the mausoleum, where he is, in fact, buried. And as we uh, go down the, the uh, gallery wall, we'll see various uh, scenes um, depicting events in his life. It's interesting to note 
often that you'll have some signatures on the paintings and uh, they are usually in Arabic, usually the, the name of the man who made the painting. Uh, in these two paintings, for instance, we see Amadou Bamba accompanied by his faithful servant who's almost always depicted in this green robe. He's carrying the symbol of um, a ceremony of ablutions, this little kettle, which is in all of the paintings. And here, angels appear bringing the letter indicating the coming of Allah. And these are very, very interesting but because here, um, as you know, until 1960, Senegal was a French colony. It became an independent country, a democratic republic in 1960. And in this scene, what we have depicted is uh, the French colonial powers realizing the power that Amadou Bamba had, the influence he had. Uh, there are over a million people who belong to the Marid sect of Islam. And because of his influence, they, in a way, resented his presence, and so they exiled him to the African country of Gabon. And this scene uh, depicts the day when Amadou Bamba is going to be put on the boat and taken away. There's a Catholic priest on the boat, and he has refused to allow Amadou Bamba to pray to Allah on the boat. And so uh, Amadou Bamba goes on his sheepskin rug, floats on the sea, on the Atlantic, and prays to Allah, and the fish come out to observe this scene. This is the second most popular sect of Islam, and it is the Tijani sect. And this is Sheikh Tijani. And as you can see from the color of his skin, he is uh, from North Africa. He's from Morocco, so that he is, uh, you know, Arab in origin. And uh, his sect of Islam is a much more uh, liberal sect. It, it is not as uh, conservative and fundamentalist as the Murud sect. Um, and the priests, as we move down the wall, these are uh, priests uh, who would be of the Tijani sect. When we look at these paintings here, these again are uh, leaders, religious leaders of the Tijani sect. And you can see that this gentleman here is dressed in a much more modern dress, a Western dress, indicating that the Tijani sect is much more liberal. Even this young man here with his French beret is a, a religious uh, Amarabu from the Tijani sect. Now we come to a very popular fig figure of West African um, legend. She is often referred to as the spirit or genie of West Africa, and her name is Mami Wata, the mother of water. She's the water, water goddess, and she's always shown uh, with the serpents. And it's interesting to note that these paintings were done by three different artists, and yet the uh, rendering of the figure and the placement of the serpent on the figure is identical in all three paintings. And she is shown with a young in, uh, figure here in this inset, a kind of a snake charmer who's playing a, a flute of some sort. On this uh, wall of the gallery, we see a number of portraits of the women of Senegal. I think the representation that you get here is quite interesting because for the most part uh, we do get a number of images of the Senegalese women in traditional dress uh, wearing you know, rather elaborate jewelry and brightly patterned fabric. Um, for the most part these portraits served ladies in, in, in two situations. Either they were young and available to be married and so they would want their portrait done to show them at their best or they had recently been widowed and, in fact, were available uh, for marriage. In this area of the museum, we have a number of images which will either depict modern-day political leaders or scenes from everyday life. And this portrait uh, is a portrait of the first elected president of Senegal, and his name is Leopold Sédar Sangar. What's very interesting about Mr. Sangar, he's quite an extraordinary individual. Uh, he is a world-respected poet, writer, statesman. He is Christian, and Senegal is only 5% Christian. What is remarkable about him being elected president uh, is that you had an 85% Muslim majority. He was so respected by the population, I think all of the Muslims must have felt that perhaps he would be more diplomatic uh, being a Christian, and that would, he would deal more equitably with the various Muslim uh, groups. Very, very popular man. He served four consecutive terms, over 20 years, as president of Senegal. He's now living in Paris, 
where he's writing a book. And uh, we're very pleased because he has written the introduction to the catalog that we're publishing uh, with, in conjunction with this exhibition. Uh, and these paintings, it's interesting, these two portraits are actually death portraits. They are portraits of a woman who has died, and that's the reason for the, the lack of pigmentation in the face. Uh, these paintings are particularly interesting because of the sophistication of the drawing. They are less characteristic of the traditional Senegalese painting in the sense that this person obviously uh, you know, has quite uh, sophisticated uh, ability with the uh, India ink. The scenes, the two lower scenes, are depicting uh, musical performances on traditional stringed African instruments. And the upper scene uh, depicts a man who uh, obviously is, is a herder, and, and he uh, you know, owns cattle and, and goats and so on. These are, are four of the most colorful paintings in the show, and they are portraits, if you will, of sacrificial lambs. During the yearly cycle of Islam, a, a ritualistic uh, ceremony takes place in which a lamb is sacrificed. And these are, of course, very beautiful. They, I think, attract our modern eye from the standpoint of, you know, the kind of geometric patterning, the very flat color, which we actually find in a great deal of modern art, art of the 20th century. Uh, so they appeal to us in that sense as well, in, a, in addition to their narrative or story uh, context. Maurice de Dieu, I think, has been very fond, uh, in particular, of the paintings of roosters and hens that he found in Senegal. Uh, we again find varying degrees of sophistication. In many cases, uh, the artists seem not to have paid a great deal of attention to the way that the rooster is actually made, you know, in terms of the way that the feathers attach to the body and so on. What they've actually done is come up with visual equivalents, you know, uh, visual uh, uh, symbolic forms and shapes and lines to represent this idea of rooster, for example. Here's, I suppose, one of the more sophisticated renderings which I believe would show, uh, you know, influence perhaps from the northern part of Africa. Oh, oh, such a remarkable exhibition of art. We are now going to share with you some Senegalese music featuring two popular and talented musicians from that country, Arfan Kuyate and his wife Penda Diabete. The string instrument that you see Arfan playing is called the Akura, and he made it himself. Let's give a listen to Arfan Kuyate and his wife Penda. I'm gonna do what I 
Cet morceau il s'appelle Kulankuma. Tu puyate 
Well, that's our trip to Senegal through art and song. We hope that you have enjoyed it and that you'll join us again soon. Bye-bye. Funding for the production of Folks is provided in part by the Friends of LPB.